So with this inaugural episode, I wanted to establish some basic premises. These premises are going to govern kind of the way that we go through trying to come to true propositions throughout these these episodes. So the the basic premises can be attacked. Ultimately, you can you can challenge these, but this is these are the premises from which I'm going to be analyzing stuff going forward. So number 1, I'm going to take into account my limitations, my cognitive limitations. And this is kind of in the vein of an idea actually from from a while ago. It's it's the magical number 7 plus or minus 2. This was an idea from George A. Miller. It's not that George Miller did uh, Fury Road. <laughs> Let's just watch that again, actually. That's a very, very good movie. No, Princeton's George A. Miller. Yeah, so he's the one who, who kind of coined this idea. And we're going to have to do kind of a simplistic establishment of this, but really it's kind of a placeholder for an idea as opposed to getting, parsing out all the neurological and psychological parts of this. A simplistic description of it is that it's about the objects that you can hold in your working memory. So, that's like I said, it's simplistic, but uh, it's a matter of, okay, 7 plus or minus 2 minus 2 is absolute objects and working memory and how those things work together. You can have 7 plus or minus 2 within uh, objects, absolute objects in your working memory at any given time. So anything beyond that is going to be too taxing on our cognitive abilities, our ability to be able to consciously adjudicate you know, the reality of a situation. So anything that has any more than that, it's going to be extra taxing on our our sloppy hardware here. Now, of course, like I said, this is a very simplistic way of looking at this, but this is this is the the idea, the governing idea, and the first the first structural part of the way that we're going to look at the ideas going forward and try to evaluate propositions. So this this particular number one limitations represents the limits of conscious, lucid, goal-oriented understanding. So our ability to lucidly go through and determine whether a proposition is true or what the best decision is or, or whatever else, this represents the limits on that, 7 plus or minus 2. Okay, so second, given those limitations, uh, we are going to establish a Socratic anchor that weighs on our confidence in propositions. So, when you're trying to assess the validity of a proposition, with more than seven plus or minus two parts, the degree to which it is more parts is the weight of the Socratic anchor on the certainty of the proposition. So if something has, you know, 10 parts or 20 parts, uh, discrete parts that you have to weigh when you're trying to determine whether something's true, a proposition, or uh, which decision you should make, or whatever else, then the Socratic anchor is going to proportionally increase related to the number of greater parts than 7 plus or minus 2. And this the Socratic anchor comes from Socrates. He had said, uh, one of the quotes, uh, one thing only I know, and that is that I know nothing. So that's why it's named is in his honor. Obviously, that's as reported by Plato. Could be just Plato's doppelganger or um, stand-in. The idea is uh, one thing only I know, and that is that I know nothing. Obviously, that is the ultimate position of humility, the Socratic paradox there. So that's that's why it's it's the Socratic anchor that's weighing down any confidence that we might have in in a proposition. Third part, number three, is bias. So uh, what kinds of bias might we have and and how could that be affecting our ability to weigh a proposition properly and objectively? Now, I'm going to vastly oversimplify psychology again and neurology, etc., but it's really a placeholder as an idea. So, your brain has a limbic system and I'm using it as just a generalized term for the subconscious and unco- unconscious inclinations or disinclinations. So, uh the way that it's kind of structured and the way that we're using it as an idea is that your limbic system is massive. It's it's all your emotions and your instincts and it's where the vast majority of the information that you ever gather goes and that's how you get certain, you get feelings that give you an inclination to do something or do something else and you're not consciously aware of those feelings but they're they're driving you one way or another whether you like it or aware of it or not. So the, the proposition is, uh, the premise is, that the limbic system is much more vast than the 7 plus or minus 2 parts that we can do consciously. So, uh, therefore, we have to be aware of and pay attention to the fact 
fact that we're going to have biases in all sorts of directions all the time. And the way that we'll analyze those is specifically related to the easiest one to kind of go through is biographical bias. So if I if I was born to a poor family and I'm weighing a proposition that is beneficial to the poor and detri- detrimental to the rich, then the degree to which something is in the geographic territory of my <laughs> my biography, then I have to be concerned about my accepting or proffering the proposition. And this is, you know, it's a simple idea. It's something that people do, you know, in kind of a a generic rudimentary way all the time in just saying that, uh, oh, well, yeah, probably have a bias in this situation because I am X and my identity is X. But the biographical bias... We're going to pay attention to that and then other aspects of bias as well, not just biographical. But that's the primary one and that's the one that's most easily illustrated as we go through kind of these analyses. Uh, It'll get more complex as we get more comfortable with the idea of the biographical bias and applying it. But for the first few episodes, you know, I'm going to be working through the best way to approach these things uh, because it's not it's not altogether clear at the outset the best way to kind of approach being able to illustrate all these ideas while we're going through kind of big topics, big, big um, complex problems. So with that, I think that's a sufficient introduction. So like I said, there we are going to be looking at big complex problems and trying to figure out the best way we can come to know how confident we should be on a proposition or the determination that anybody else has made on that proposition. Uh, this is going to apply to any given any given homo sapien across the planet that's going to apply to that. And we'll talk about the way that we integrate other modes of knowledge, uh, other epistemologies uh, that we have kind of at our disposal. Things like, you know, AI, uh, the way that long-term investment into a topic, uh, the way that impacts our ability to be able to understand complex problems in that area. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, first, we're going to start out with just just trying to apply these ideas. Uh, so there are the three, three areas. Areas, three premises that we're establishing from the outset. Like I said, ultimately, these premises can be attacked, but the premises are limitations, number one, the Socratic anchor, number two, and number three, bias. So we're looking at those three things, limitations, Socratic anchor, and bias. And those are the things we keep in mind as we're trying to analyze these things, uh, these propositions. Okay, that should be that should be good for now. I will see you all in the next one.